uh, I'm Aoi Sugiwa. Um, my dissertation theme is integrating sustainable development perspectives into the world heritage management process. Um, sorry. Um, the sustainable development concepts were first introduced by the well-known Brown report in 1987, but it was in 2015 that the concepts were formally integrated into the World Heritage process by UNESCO's policy document. The policy is intended to contribute to the four dimensions of sustainable development, such as to realize environmental sustainability, social and economic development, and peace and security through appropriate heritage protection. And by doing so, it finally aims to realize a mutual benefit between sustainable development and heritage. So it means achieving a good balance between development and heritage protection that benefits not only the society, but also heritage itself. This idea has been accepted at the, the theoretical level, but the question is how this idea is embraced and implemented on the ground level. So regarding World Heritage Management, each nation has to develop a management plan for each site to ensure the effective protection. A management plan is a comprehensive document that describes how the site is or will be managed among stakeholders, including both daily care of the site and long-term action plans. So it can be said that a management plan provides basic guidance and action plans for stakeholders to protect heritage on a long-term basis. So a management plan can link both UNESCO's policy and the implementation in the field. And I thought I could find how nations recognize and integrate the sustainable development concepts into their heritage management by studying their management plans and how management plans can contribute to their mutually beneficial relationship between sustainable development and heritage. Methodology. Um, as far as I searched, no researcher had systematically compared management plans in different countries. So I decided to compare management plans both in the UK and Japan, which, which is my country, and uh, they have different cultural and historical context, and to compare them with UNESCO's policy as well. But given that the policy was adopted in 2015, and usually it takes only one year to develop a management plan. So considering the saturation period of the policy, I decided to compare management plans um, after 2017, and the total number of management plans I examined was 17. The method I used is qualitative content analysis, which is good at discovering the meaning of words or contents within texts and, and systematically analyzing their relationships. And also it good at identifying the trends, patterns, and differences among the texts. And the, the method can also use both qualitative and quantitative approaches. And like Isabel, my data is also massive. So I use NVivo software to support my analysis. Um, this is a list of compared World Heritage sites. Um, since the targets are management plans after 2017, uh, popular sites such as Stonehenge and the Hadrian's Wall in the UK and Kyoto and Nara in Japan are not included and only three sites in Japan are applicable. So that is a limiting factor in this research. And the threat landscape of Northwest Wales, you can see the bottom of the list of the UK, uh, is currently under UNESCO evaluation and not the World Heritage Site yet. But I included this site to identify the latest trend in World Heritage Management Plan. 
And the assessment framework was developed based on the UNESCO's policy requirements and the literature review. Uh, there are five analysis categories. One is how the management plan considers the relationship between heritage and sustainable development. And the second is whether the management plan considers heritage with socio-ecological perspectives and how it it manages the larger spatial areas, such as buffer zones. Um, this second and uh, third categories are related to the UNESCO's requirement to understand and manage the site. And the fourth is the degree and process of the local community participation. And the last one is the role of the management plan, its development process, and, and the action plans. The result shows uh, UNESCO's policy has not been fully adopted among the two countries yet, and only two UK sites mention UNESCO's policy. And some UK sites mention the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and other national sustainable, de sustainable development policies, such as the National Planning Policy Framework in England. But no Japanese site mentions international or national policies related to sustainable development. And I think this is because um, in Japan, um, any laws and national guidance regarding heritage protection do not mention the sustainable development so far. And this result probably reflects this. And uh, regarding the recognition of heritage and sustainable development relationship, um, all sites mention the heritage versus development context. So each site thinks heritage protection conflicts with development. And only three UK sites are aware of the mutual relationship uh, of sustainable development and heritage protection, such as the English Lake District, the Strait Landscape of Northwest Wales, and Liverpool. Um, both the Lake District and the Strait Landscape uh, cultural landscapes, and in these sites, the protection of the local community and heritage are interconnected with each other. So I think that would foster this uh, mutual relationship with you. Um, but the Liverpool is very interesting case because Liverpool is an economically deprived area in the UK, and the city has focused on focused on heritage-led regeneration. But uh, the site was listed as World Heritage in Danger in 2012 due to the development plans in the World Heritage property area. So uh, this is very ironical situation because uh, on one hand, the city recognizes the importance of both development and heritage protection, but actually it is also facing the difficulty of balancing both. And as I said earlier, the UNESCO's policy is not fully accepted, but um, many sites acknowledge some kind of sustainable development concept, such as sustainable tourism, sustainable economy, and community like that. And also the, the socio-ecological and other forms of heritage values are widely recognized, uh, like um, local economy, natural environment, um, religious values, etc. And therefore, it can be said um, at the recognition level, the sustainable development idea and the diverse values of heritage have been widely accepted in both countries. But the challenges are also identified. One is a narrow focus on the visual protection of the buffer zone. Uh, this is related to the next one, strong reliance on the planning system. Because many sites are protected by planning system, apart from cultural heritage protection systems. A planning system is good at protecting heritage visually physically and uh, materially, but it may not be the best way to safeguard the socio-ecological and intangible aspects of heritage. That means it lacks comprehensive 
protective or supportive measures for safeguarding the socio-ecological aspects of the heritage. And also many sites held community events and public consultations in their management plans development process. The local community does not usually participate in the decision-making process and how their opinions are reflected in the decision is not clear. So in many cases, superficial engagement of local communities is found, as well as the opaque decision-making and compromise process. And also in the UK, the national planning policy framework encourages uh, local, local planning authorities to take World Heritage Management plans into consideration as a material document for their local planning. And management plans play a kind of overarching principle for different systems and uh, stakeholders, but it is not the case in Japan. So management plans in Japan are developed in line with existing systems. So it can be said that the Japanese management plan is a sort of patchwork of existing systems, uh, not over over us um, and different system and organizations. So based on the policy for realizing the mutual benefit of sustainable development and heritage protection, it is essential to create an enabling environment and build an inclusive and collaborative management system. For the first stage, creating the basement is needed and that is to build a shared understanding of the various values of heritage and their contribution to society with a wide range of stakeholders and local residents. And on top of that, build a joint management system with related organizations and a wide range of cooperation systems is needed. Also, encourage community engagement in heritage management and the decision-making decision process and more transparent and informed decision-making system should be developed. And considering the role of a management plan, it has a potential that can integrate and visualize this information and the principles that should be applied. And it can fulfill the function of supplementing the management system. So in conclusion, um, efforts are needed at the international, national and local levels for realizing the policy's aim, such as UNESCO should, UNESCO should develop indicators to evaluate more socio-ecological aspects of heritage management towards sustainable development, um, which means um, because UNESCO has now indicators for sustainable development, but the, the current indicators are not enough to evaluate wide range of aspects of sustainable development, so they should improve them. And the national government should support developing a joint management system through national policies and guidance. And at the local level, they need a shared understanding of heritage and its contribution to society and wider, wider, wider engagement and collaboration beyond sectors and the transparent, transparent decision-making and implementation process are needed. And finally, um, as you can see, there are two limitations of this research. Uh, one is the limited number of management plans, especially in Japan. I have only three management plans in Japan. And because I only examined management plans, so the question is how these management plans are implemented in the field. Uh, so this can be studied in future research. So thank you for listening.